That's the sound of the send initiating yet again. It got a rainy day. The Subaru has been retired, as you guys know. I'm taking out the Highlander to do a little bit of fishing today. We got Pedro, the mascot of the Send, to bring us to victory today. And if you're wondering about my other Subarus in the shop right now, so just get out there. Let's catch them. are seeing what I'm seeing here. The rain has dissipated. We're faced with slightly different conditions and I'm not complaining because I anticipated getting totally drenched today on the scent. And any day I stay dry, it's a happy day. I mean, I like getting wet too, but you know, this is going to be a good one. We got rain all day, so the flows are going to be bumped up. It's late summer going into fall, so the trout fishing is pretty prime right now. I mean, the water temps are getting colder and this time of year is when you can catch the most aggressive biggest trout by far. In this video, I'm gonna go through some trout tips along with just any knowledge that I have on trout fish and share with you guys. Get on an adventure. Tip number one though, listen closely. Hike far off the beaten path. This is still the beaten path. I'm hiking a mile on this. And then I'm cutting way over into the woods, the creek somewhere in that direction. But it's probably, I'd say a mile and a half hike. And you're gonna see what the results of that are. <laughs> this entrance to the spot was calling my name. It's beautiful ton of ferns got a nice hike into the spot starting off and that's part of it to be honest i mean just like the the whole entire journey trout fishing is why i love it freaking skeeters man the skeeters are bad look at how the river ecosystem kind of changes i'm in like a mud flat right now not much vegetation just pretty much like where the blown out river would flow following the deer watching out for prickers coming up to the first spot of the day. This is a river I'm fishing today. I'm gonna give you guys a, your first look at it. Whenever you're getting down to the spot, it's good to analyze the water, swat the mosquitoes, but I'm gonna take my first step in the creek. Feel the water temperatures out. Oh, wow. Whew. Freezing cold, that's good. And the flows are clear but high, which is exactly what I wanted. Actually, this is crazy. I wonder if I have a clip of the river here like only six months ago before all the high flows we had. This is all kind of blocked up and you couldn't really fish it that well. There's so much cover. The rain took everything out. I got a two inch swim bait rigged up. I should probably be throwing a fly set up because the fish are clearly feeding on probably the mosquitoes that are flying around everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna put the phone away because I'm getting eaten alive. Enjoying it out here, catching some fish. Let's get right into it. Post flood fishing. I'm gonna get my first cast out right in here. There's some good current. It's not really as deep as some of the pools we're gonna come up to up ahead, but this section of river is below a public trout stocking area. And then there's like a good mile of river that's just farmland. And I don't know how the fish get back here, but I've seen some of the biggest trout that I've seen in Jersey in this water. And one thing I wanna talk about before we get into the fishing today is kind of what we're dealing with because this is post flood fishing. This river literally was probably way back there where you see a little incline, it was like, four or five feet high. So a lot of the stock trout probably got pushed around and pushed into the really deep holes during the flood. So it's gonna be interesting where we're getting most of our bites from. I don't know what I'm expecting. Fish on right away. That fish hit it on the drop. All right, this could be where it's going down. There's a deep hole right under the tree. All right. Oh, is that a bite? Got him, fish on, fish on. What is that? Oh, it's a little brown trout. Little, little wild brown, all right. That's a good sign on the swim bait too. I mean, that takes an aggressive fish to eat a bait that big. This guy's gonna get big in a few years, probably be a 16 plus if he's feeding on bait like that. Sometimes it just takes a minute to figure out where the trout are and what they wanna bite. They might be a little further up in the pool. All right, hey, sometimes the first lure that you choose isn't the one that's gonna get all the bites. So I'm gonna take off this swim bait. I'm gonna take out the tackle box. I got another lure in mind. The challenge of trout fishing sometimes is finding the lure that the fish wanna bite. I just switched it up to this teeny tiny jerk bait. It's, it's given me a lot of success lately, especially with wild trout, but I'm looking for some big stock. Just got re-rigged up, tied on this power bait worm. I'm gonna drift the worm under the tree, try to get something to come out and pick it up. Well, 
Somehow no bites to this spot. It happens. I'm gonna keep going upstream now. I was really thinking I'd catch a trout out of there. You know what could be the case too? The fish that was in that pool down there that didn't bite could be up here in the current. It's not that much of a trek for a fish to do that. So maybe right here in the current, we're gonna hook into something. Oh yeah, that could be the cast. Got him, fish on, no! Oh, that was a nice one. Right there in the current, the fish just picked it up. I don't know how big that was. My drag's a little loose, pretty damn good. So we're coming up to the last pool of the day. I haven't caught anything up until this point. This is kind of how the recent trips have been going. I've been fishing really hard, not really finding all that much, but I have a lot of confidence in this spot. Also the lures that I'm throwing. That might have been a big bite. Wild brown, oh. Nice wild brown at the end of the pool on my first cast. It's a good sign. I think the swim bait might call out some bigger fish that are lurking in here. Let's see. Got him, got him, got him. Came back for it. Let's go. All right, so second. Oh, not the second trout of the day. Almost second. Okay, so that's a good sign. I'm going to switch between the swim bait and a power bait worm. I got the jig head on so I can literally just interchange it. I've been talking about the late summer, early fall bite. It's right now. I'm going to let it sink down to the bottom. It's kind of deep right here. Work it back slow. Some jigs. Got him. Got him. Oh, he's off. Why the heck? Why am I? I've been losing so many trout lately. I'm so confused. I'm gonna go in for this one. I'm gonna go in and get this. All right, nice, nice, nice. Got this one, babe. And now this is why I got totally soaked. Get ready. This is this is why. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that's a, that's a nice, what is that? Wild brown? Looks like a small mouth. This fish is so dark. All right, so only wild brown so far today. We're on our way up in size though. Let's get them handed. Oh yeah, look at that thing. Chunky wild brown on the swim bait. That's why I got the swim bait back. But not only this fish, the other ones that are gonna come. Like I was talking about earlier too with the flood fishing. A lot of the fish are gonna have come into this pool just because it's really slow and deep and it would be a spot they could have held up in when the current got so high. Nice bite, there we go, another fish on. Another wild brown. No kidding, oh no, it's a rainbow, it's a rainbow. Snagged them. How did I snag this fish? So weird. A snagged rainbow trout back on his way. The swim bait's getting demolished. Finally putting some good use to it right now. You have not seen a fish until you see the fish that are under this tree up here. I might switch up lure. I'm gonna keep the swim bait until I decide not to anymore. Oh my God, that, that, was, that was a fish. I hooked into a fish under this tree once. It literally straight ran the drag for 20 seconds. Had to have been the biggest Jersey trout in existence. Oh, big brown, big brown just ambushed it there. That was crazy. Oh, that was him, that was him. That was the fish I was looking for. All right, that was a good cast up there on the side of the current. Got him, got him. I don't know what this is, that might be big. Might be big. Oh, nope. Little stalker rainbow. Oh, wow. Hook popped out. Got 
Oh, that's a nice fish. There we go. I don't know if that's a fish we're looking for. How big is this thing? Oh yeah, big wild brown. Oh my God. This thing's giant. Actually, I don't know if it's wild. Big brown. No, it's a stocky. It's a stocky, but... Beautiful brown, all of 17, 17 and a half inches. Oh, right back in the water. Let's go, that finally paid off. I've been fishing up the creek for so long. Got to the honey hole right here. I got a feeling we're catching some more fish out of here. I mean, I've landed some of my biggest trout in Jersey out of here, so I'm gonna keep fishing for a second. What better time to check out from today's fishing adventure than standing in the middle of the river after getting on an insane streak at the last pool of the day. And I kind of expected it kind of didn't. The fish were kind of finicky all day. They weren't really committing to whatever presentation I presented. But I got up here, I had the swim bait tied on, and that's where the magic happened. That brown trout, I've never landed a brown that big out of that pool. I've landed some giant rainbows up to like, 27, 28 inches, which is just mind blowing for New Jersey. None of those today, but catching that brown was definitely the icing on the cake. And then I switched up lure a little bit to see what the fish would bite. And I finished off throwing a jerk bait, no bites on the jerk bait. And I'm not complaining because I had an awesome time out here. It was really fun. Every trip has something special to be taken away from it. And today I came out because I knew the bite would be good after the rain and also the transition into the fall that we're having right now. The water's cooling down, almost waiting season. I usually wait until November for that. But until next time, keep on getting out there. Keep on promoting the positivity of fishing and keep on sending it. No matter what, no matter where you are, explore your local waters. You'll find some crazy things. Just hike a little bit farther off the bean path than you would think to do initially. And that's where you'll find the true hidden gems. And that's also where you might get skunked too. But it's all a part of it. And those days where you don't catch any fish, but those are some of the days that are honestly some of the most memorable because you grinded it out. And maybe, maybe you got a bite right at the end and it just made the trip. That's what it's all about. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Skylight out. <laughs>